thanks for coming out on this misty, moisty Sunday morning, right? My name's Tim Sheehan. I'm with Quizdom Incorporated. I'm actually the uh, New Jersey and Pennsylvania product specialist for Quizdom, so it's kind of nice being at a show here in Philadelphia. Um, here to talk about student response. How many of you have used student response in the classroom before? Any of you? No? <laughs> well, what I'm going to do right now, actually, if you pick up your remote and you hold down your on-off button for 1-1000, one, 2-1000, one, notice the response I got just asking a question like that, it can be kind of difficult to really gauge, okay, who and has who answered and who didn't. But I can actually send a spontaneous question out to to all of you. And you should see on your screen pop up yes or no. So I'll, I'm going to ask the question again this time, but now you're going to actually use a student responder to, to answer. And what you're going to do is you're going to use that bottom arrow button to select either yes or no. Okay? So you're going to use your bottom arrow on the Q6. And then to send in your answer, you're going to hit send. Okay? So how many of you have used student response in the classroom or as a student yourself? Just answer that, select yes or no, and then hit send. Now we can see there's six remotes active here. And we have five of six of you have, have actually answered in so far. I can go to a graph and we can see how we're doing here. What we're talking about uh, is really simple interactivity. You have basically, you know, your software that's loaded on a, on a computer, a radio frequency hub that sends a signal to your remotes. And this can be used with any screen activity. So you have uh, activities, any screen-based, you know, PDF or a Word document, you can make it interactive with this. What's great about today's student responders, and this is including Quizdom, is you can use it with paper-based activities, too. Oh, okay. On-the-fly activities are very good. Just like the one I just did, I sent a yes or no question out to you. It was not programmed into the slide presentation I had here. Okay, so it's something that I can interact with my students at any time. It doesn't have to be a canned presentation all in a PowerPoint or what have you. So let's take a look again at the responder that you have in your hands. And if it's not on right now, you want to hold your on-off button for 1-1000, 2-1000. That'll turn it on. You're going to select with the down arrow button on the, from the screen and then hit send. So let's look at another practice question here. What fraction of the stars are red? So you're going to use your down arrow button and select either A, B, C, or D. And I can see that there are nine remotes active right here by looking at my buzz inbox. And let's see what the responses are. Oh, you're all geniuses. My goodness. Now, if you had a spread of responses here, okay, I'm going to have to warn you. If, if you know the answer, oh, there you go. See, that's a little bit more interesting. Now we have a little bit different. Notice there's a change button on there. On the right-hand side, you can change that. So if a student comes up, they can actually, oh, I put in the wrong thing. Let me put it, put it differently. Notice this doesn't show what is the right or wrong answer, though. So it's a good time for classroom discussion. You know, and you can you say, okay, Tommy, uh, what was your answer? Well, I said B. Okay, well, back up your answer. Why'd you do that? You know, what, you know, what was the, your thinking behind that? That classroom discussion. And then you can toggle to the correct answer, of course, showing that in green. Let's look at another example. Now, this is a simple linear equation. But I've normally it would be x equals something. Here I've just changed it to make it a little bit simpler. You're just going to put in a number. Now don't everybody put in the right number, so then we'll have an interesting looking graph, won't we? So we're going to solve for x. 2x plus 17 equals 31. So it'll just be a single digit number you're going to be putting in. I have a couple of answers coming in already. Now you're not always going to want to project a graph up here, okay? Sometimes, in fact, one of the most useful things about student response, especially if you have a instructor device, is that I can actually see on here a private graph. And I know it's, it's probably hard to see from where you are, but I can see the actual graph on my LCD here. So as I'm teaching, 
Okay, it really puts a fine point on my pedagogy because I can say, oh, half the class isn't getting that little concept. I better attack that from another angle. Okay, but I can see that right here, and I can even go down to details and see which student didn't understand it. Okay, so it really gives you a lot of control in the classroom. Then I can, of course, I can, if I want to display it here, I can certainly do that. Now, one of the things you can do with this data is, with, with specifically with Quizdoms, when I, I think it's one of our advantages, is that you can take that data and you can play a game with it. And we have a couple of games that come with the software. One's Fast Track, one's Baseball, one's Mission to Mars. And it works with this data and makes it a little bit more fun. It's great for reviews. And I'll show you that in just a little another minute. With the Q6, which is the remote you have in your hand, you can actually text in answers. Now, if I was saying that the answer to this question is Dayton, which is not, OK, and I wanted to spell Dayton out on here, how would I do that? Well, it's just kind of like the old, you know, before we had those QWERTY boards for our cell phones, I'd actually spell it out, if I was going to spell Dayton, that is, and I would spell, I'd hit the three button once for a D, the two button once for an A, and so on. So now you're not relegated to simply multiple choice with a student response. You can also do short answers and mix it up a little bit more. Now, the way I feel, multiple choice can be awfully challenging. Okay, now we have three answers. Let's see what we have. And this is a great thing also uh, for polling students, just to get an idea of what, you, you know, the, if you wanted different responses, to be able to show different responses. So we got Boise, Columbus, Columbus, and Dayton. Doesn't really show what the correct answer is, but let's let's take a stab at it. Let's see what it is. Oh, it is Columbus, son of a gun. I guess I was wrong with Dayton. Now, one of the things that is, is important, of course, is that you want to, especially with a lot of teachers, you know, you, you get a, a student response system in the classroom. And teachers are so overworked. I used to be a middle school teacher. I taught Spanish. I wanted to assess all the time, but assessing all the time, and then I actually had to correct those things, those, those tests and quiz, quizzes. And it slowed down the way I could develop newer and better content for my classes. We have a, uh, a whole library of curriculum that you can download for free. And this is actually out of our uh, life science curriculum, middle school, talking about cell structures and how about inside cells, there's these small structures called organelles. And what they are, you have things like the mitochondria, you have the lysosomes. On the outside, of course, you have your, your cell membrane. And in the inside, you have in the center, your nucleus, which some people refer to as the brain of the cell. Now, class, I've just taught a short lesson here. So let's see how you're paying attention, OK? Cells are not hollow inside, but inside a cell are small structures called, don't everybody answer the right answer. <laughs> Notice this is changing in real time. OK, so the, as the answers come in, this is also showing. And you have different, different charts you can show, as well as a class list. Now you might think, well, where are all these names coming from? I use, in my demo, I use the uh, Spanish World Cup team uh, and, and their jersey numbers actually for their participant IDs. So that you did very well on that one. Here's an example of another text answer. Now, we, most of you probably remember what the answer to this is. It's nucleus, right? Okay, nucleus can be kind of a tricky word to spell. So if we let's all take a stab at it right now, try to spell nucleus. Now one of the advantages of our software is that you can actually put up to four different versions of the spelling of a word, or maybe four different answers, correct answers. So you don't have to go back and remark and say, okay, nucleus, yeah, but they didn't spell it. They spelled it with a K instead of a C. Well it takes up a lot of time and you want to save time when you're using a student response system. So if we look at our responses here, you say nucleus, nucleus, and nucleus. okay? I could actually have all three of these spellings accepted as correct answers. 
Okay, normally it wouldn't be that, you know, that wild of a variation in spelling, but you can imagine when you're teaching science, maybe you're not really that concerned about how well they're spelling nucleus. So, so you want to be able to accept those answers right off the bat. Student remotes, especially these days, you'll see, and Quizdom's included in this, you'll see bigger LCD screens. And this allows you not only to put more text on the screen, but it can explain maybe the question. And you know how sometimes you'll have a question on the screen while the kids are going like this, right? Well, having it on the remote themselves mean they, they can just look at the screen and answer it, okay, right off the bat. And as you see with the Q6, which is the remote you have with you, you're able to do all these. Actually, it's up to like 13 different types of uh, answers, including multiple mark. Anybody know what multiple mark is? That type of question? It's when you have more than one correct answer in a multiple choice. You could do sequencing, like for instance, put these four chemical processes in the right order, okay? Or these four episodes in the story in the right order. And then you have numeric, multi-numeric, mixed expressions, subscript, superscript, math symbols. So it's very amenable to math, math and science. And of course, text input, you've had experience with that just now. You can also do text editing. What's wrong with this statement? Correct the, the punctuation or maybe correct the spelling or the verb form. Instructor options, I'm using one right now. And one of the things that is great with this is from a classroom management standpoint, you can move around the classroom and still be interactive with the screen. Okay, you can see responses on here. So it really lends itself to increasing your control over the classroom. And when you increase your control over the classroom, we all know the kids are more engaged, they're more comfortable, they feel safer. So it just works out better. So having a good instructor re uh, remote, is, I think, is very, very important. That's one of the things that we really stress. How many of you use PowerPoint uh, currently? OK, a number of you. Absolutely simple integration with PowerPoint. It pops up with a little quiz or action point tab, and you have all your tools right there. And you basically click on a slide, click on some drop downs, and that's it. It's really, really, you don't have to import anything. Yes. OK. <laughs> you also have Quizdom Survey Bar, and this will float above any application. So if you're, say, playing a film, you can throw out questions spontaneous, spontaneously to your, uh, to your students. One of the, my favorite, will Quizdom work with Prezi? Yes. Um, Paper-based activities, this is one of my favorite things. It's actually one of the simplest activities, and if we have time, I'm going to have a little activity for you, a little trivia quiz. So the kids come in, they grab their, the test, they put their answers into the remotes, and on your screen, you won't project anything on this, but you'll see little, you know, trues and false or, uh, you know, red, red or green marks creep across the screen. And, of course, when they're done, it's automatically graded. So it saves the teacher time. You can spend more time on developing good content. It can also be used, the paper-based activities, by the way. I've seen it used very, very effectively as a warm-up activity. The teacher will just write three questions on the board in, you know, on the dry erase board. It doesn't have to be a projected thing. And during their prep, they just made an answer key for three questions. The kids come in. They have it on a timer. they got to put these three answers in. And it's part, it's 10% of their grade. And they do it every day. And it gets the kids, from, instead of standing by the door and chatting with their friends, they're in their seats, their juices are flowing, and it's actually part of their grade. Learning games, I want to show you that in just a minute, okay? But we include Fast Track, it's a racing game. We also have a thing called Quandary, which is like a Jeopardy type game. Kids go, go nuts for these. Quizdom Connect Online is our. This is our library of online curriculum that you can download, okay? We have a lot of it is free. You can use the whole package. You can manipulate it. You can change slides, take slides out, and uh, it's really a great resource. We also have a premium service, which is tagged to all state standards, and we're just moving now to Common Core. So I think it's by July we'll have all that available that will be matching up with our software also. So that will be a great advantage. If you get a chance to go by our booth, we also have Qtopia right across from us. And this is a freemium. So if you have teachers who okay, I can't really afford a, a, a clicker set yet, okay, but 
this is a way is you, you're able to actually start using the curriculum, and it's a great thing, especially for you know remediation with a, with a student, for instance, it's a little bit behind. You want them to maybe practice a certain skill. They can go and practice it on the computer. They don't need the, the clickers. All right. I have a um, a New Jersey trivia quiz here. Now I'm from New Jersey, so if ever, you could just pass those around. And I don't expect you all to know these. But I'm going to run, this is a text-based, you know, a print-based activity. And I'm just going to go up to my answer key. Now, if you look at your remotes, you'll notice the remote's turned off. And at the end of an activity, the remotes will turn off on this. This answer key is such a, an easy thing to do. Now you're going to see the actual screen that a teacher would see, and normally you wouldn't be projecting this, okay, because you don't want to make it too easy on the kids. But I'm going to run this activity. I'm going to start my session. It just takes a second for the presentation setup box to come up. And you'll notice when the presentation setup box comes up, it says present as, it defaults to self-paced mode. That means the kids can skip questions, come back to them, change their answers, that type of thing. I have my World Cup team still set as my class list. Now what you'd like to do is to turn your remotes back on, hold your on-off button down for 1-1000, one, 2-1000. And as you turn those on, I've given you all Spanish World Cup team name, so, okay, but if you look on your top right, you'll see the remote name, so you can actually see your remote in here, okay, and let me just uh, maximize this. So, how do we answer in? Well, it's loaded, you see ABC, select ABCD, and then hit your top right button, send. Now, how do we get to the next question? Well, hit your right arrow button. And then it loads again for the next question. And you can see the answers appearing here on the screen. Now the good thing is I would just be sitting this as a teacher, I'd be sitting at my, at my desk with my laptop or my desktop, and I could see the actual progress of the test and also how the kids are doing. So if I see one particular child lagging way behind, I can, you know, get with them and see, okay, what's happening with them. So it really gives you a very good control, even on a text-based uh, test like something like this. So let's make believe we've all completed it. If anybody can get to five, okay, here we've got one, one of you have gotten to five, remote number four. When you get to the end, it'll ask you, are you finished? And you have to answer yes or no, okay? If you say no, you can go back and check, all right? If you say yes, it locks you out. The great thing about this is, and I'll just close this down here. I know you're not all finished. I apologize. Once this is done, where's all this data going, folks? Well, it actually goes to a results tab that's in our main software. And I can actually pull this this data up, remember the one we did just now? It was the uh, Quizdom 611, and we had it was a slideshow. There's 11 different ways you can actually run reports on this. I'll just show you one. But here's a question summary report. It'll actually include a copy of the slide. and show the responses, and this is interactive, okay, as we go. So it's great for, you know, post-review, after you've taken a quiz, and say, okay, let's, let's see how we did, where did we do well, and the kids really can see as a class how, how they're doing. You also have, we might, I did an answer key as well, right, the New Jersey trivia quiz. And if I click on that, it comes up, and here's our results. Now you can export these to Excel. You can import them into your grading program very easily. You can print them as a PDF. You can also select one student and compare them against the rest of the class, so it's great for parent-teacher night. 
okay? So using, the way I like to do it is have teachers start with the simplest program, like answer key to begin with, and once they start using it, it's so easy, then they want to learn everything else, okay? And technology can be, you know, a little bump in the road, it can be a little learning curve, but this really smooths it out, and it makes them more inspired. Now, hopefully you've been engaged during your time. Hopefully you also feel that, okay, if I'm, I've been engaged during this little session, that maybe my students could be engaged more with, with, uh, with a student response system. This, quest, this uh, quiz that you have in front of you, this can all, you can also do quizzes in, or, or tests in different versions. So to differentiate in the classroom, I could have you know, Billy running a one, one quiz and then have everybody else doing another one. And I could merge those all. And so they would still, there would be, nobody would know that he has a different one. Okay, and you can merge these results at the end. So it really lends itself to differentiation, the, the answer key program. Any questions I can answer about student response in general? How do you enter the quiz in the, like how do you create the answer key? Well, if it's a text, if it's a text-based, right, if it's a text-based file like this, okay, it, it's a printed file. Uh, that would be something that would be printed, you'd hand out, okay? But the actual answer key itself, that is what this is here. And I'll show you how to, if, like say we wanted to make this a 10 question test, I'm just going to click on here. This is how easy it is to add. See how I'm adding new ones? And I click on answer and just add another one. You know, it's something you can do on, during your prep. It's super easy. Anyway, that's pretty much all the time I have. Um, but please, our, our booth is right down here, 918. If you go down straight here, it's on your left-hand side. We can answer any questions. And uh, thank you so much. You've been a, a great group.